Hello, Jeff. It is Saturday. So, last time you did this. The products transacted through the service are licensed, not sold to you for use only under the. Which I can only really respond to with this. My client wishes to engage in a bout of protracted sexual intercourse with your client. <laughs> uh, yeah, can I, can I just chip in? So there's that. This time, I wanted to go back and talk about the whole pre-futurism thing, which I kind of skipped over. But before that, I figured I should probably address the whole thing about time zones. Okay, so, you're uh, right, you're Lee here. I got this. <sighs> okay, so. Time zones. Time zones were a major accomplishment of the Thurkund Interspatial Congress and the cornerstone of their charter to map the expanse of all time. Not chronologically, but chirologically. Rather than focusing on creating one unbroken timeline from the beginning of the universe on into forever, chirological mapping focuses instead on the expansion, contraction, and interaction between the spheres of influence throughout time and space of each intelligent species focusing on the interconnected disconnection between everyone ever. Now, just about any trans historian will focus on how this directly, or as directly as time travel allows, led to the solipsist wars and existentialism. Hey, but I think that that undercuts the importance hey. that this had on the development hey. of what? Time zones. Like, Earth time zones? Oh. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, well, sorry again. Uh, I'm gonna go and get some of those dumplings from yesterday. Okay. Wh wait. When you say you're going to get them from yesterday, do you mean- Ow! God. Yeah. <sighs> so. Time zones. Oh, why did you have to ask me about time zones? There are different deviations, observances, and non-observances of daylight savings time, and historical connection to European imperialism. It's kind of a big topic, so we'll see what happens. So, when you think of time zones, you probably think of Greenwich Mean Time, or GMT, which is based around the Prime Meridian in Greenwich, England. Why is the Prime Meridian in Greenwich, England? Why is the Northern Hemisphere on top of maps? Because they say so. That's why. And literally no better reason. Most accepted standards for things in the world are just that way because someone in history called dibs and then probably subjugated a bunch of people and won a bunch of wars. Woo! Although now, no matter what the BBC tells you, we don't actually use the GMT standard anymore. The world has moved on to UTC, the Coordinated Universal Time, which uses atomic clocks throughout the world for supreme accuracy. Although the UK is still in the center of it, but, you know, baby steps. And UTC uses things like leap seconds to deal with the fact that the Earth is slowing down because of physics. Nothing, not even time standards, last forever. So, how do time zones work? Well, they work because we all agree to follow them. Why they work, or exist at all, is because of two things. Perspective and technology. Back in what historians refer to as the day, time was marked by what we call the apparent solar time, which is exactly what it sounds like. Hey, where's the sun? Straight up. Oh. It is noon, then. Unfortunately, it's only the apparent solar time, because that is how it appears. We live on a spherical planet, so when it is apparently noon in one town, it might be apparently 1150 in the next city over. But if you aren't traveling quickly or communicating instantly with people in that other town, then it doesn't really affect you at all. But, as you may have noticed, thanks to technology, we do both of those things all the time. And it was progress in both of those areas that made the lack of a standardized system of timekeeping such a gigantic hassle. For example, look at America in the mid-1800s. Each railroad company had its own different time standard, usually set off of where its home base was or major railroad transportation hubs or things like that. So the solution is to lump large swaths of the planet together and call them a time zone, where all the clocks 
will be the same time. For no more or less reason than so we don't have to keep resetting our watches quite so often when we travel. It is a product of the continued expansion of our ability to experience and to communicate with the world around us. And if you think it's messed up now, just wait until we start living on other planets, satellites, asteroids, spacecrafts. Time zones are a direct result of the fact that the world is a messy place and humanity is kind of just making it up as they go. And I'm not going to list and describe particular time zones because there's a lot of them. And while we generally think of there being an hour difference between each one, that's not always the case. If you look up UTC on Wikipedia or whatever, you'll see that some countries or places or whatever in the world will have differences of a half hour or 15 minutes from other nearby time zones. So no, you're gonna have to do that legwork on your own. Because it has been nearly six minutes already and I haven't even talked about pre-futurism. I get, ah, I'm out of minutes. But it is Chinese national holiday time, so I don't have as pressing a work schedule right now as I typically would. So I'll spend some time tomorrow putting together a pre-futurism video package thingy. And for now, I will stop talking about things. Anyway, I'm tapped. See you in the future.